this lesson is about polyprotic buffers. I'm going to start with diprotic buffers. One of the important pieces of information is that the number of Henderson Hasselbalch equations is equal to the number of pKa values. So in the case of a general diprotic acid, H2A, in equilibrium with its intermediate form, HA minus, we find that we have a pH of equal to pKa1 plus log of the basic form, which in this case is the intermediate, HA minus, over the acidic form, H2A. That intermediate form of the diprotic acid can go ahead and equilibrate by losing its own proton and will have a pH equals pKa2 plus log of A2 minus over HA. All of these Henderson Hasselbeck equations, so both of them in this case, have to be satisfied in the same beaker. So you can't have concentrations that will make one of these formulas true, but the other one false. They all have to be true at the same time. That means that we can use whichever Henderson Hasselbeck equation is convenient at any point in time. If you happen to know H2A and HA minus information, that means you can use pK1. And if you know about HA minus and A2 minus, then you can use pK2. For example, if we look at phthalic acid, H2P, where P stands for phthalic instead of phosphorus, we can ask ourselves what the pH would be if we mixed 0.01 moles of Na2P and 0.015 moles of KHP. One of the important things to notice is that the compounds have salt ions, so they are sodium 2P, right, which means that we have a P2 minus, so this is sodium phthalate. And 0.015 mole of KHP, the K is plus one, which means that we're talking about HP minus. So that is our intermediate. Since we are working with the fully basic form then for NAP2P and our intermediate form HP minus, then we know that we can go ahead and we can use PK2. As a result, we use the Henderson Hasselbeck for the second equilibrium. We take the pKa value and plug it in here, and then we put our moles of the P2 minus and the moles of the HP minus in as well. So that is our information from the question, where we always have the base on top of the acidic form. Calculating that out gives us a pH of 5.23. Now, most of our questions for polyprotic acids and bases are not going to be so easy as being given moles of everything involved. In this example question, we're asking ourselves how many milliliters or what volume of 1.2 molar HCl, a strong acid, would be needed to add to one gram of disodium phthalate to get a buffer of pH 6.0. The first thing that we need to do is figure out where this desired pH of 6.0 falls in relation to the pKa values of 2.95 and 5.4 for the respective proton losses of this diprotic acid and then also figure out what the dominant species are present. So our pH of six is going to be just above pH of 5.4 for that second pKa. That means that our dominant species present, our main dominant species is P2 minus, and the second most dominant is HP minus. Therefore, when we ask ourselves what reaction occurs when we add HCl and the sodium phthalate together, we can think about the reaction as being a movement from phthalate towards monohydrogen phthalate. Now, the first thing that happens when the sodium phthalate is added to the solution is that those sodium ions are going to dissociate and dissolve and leave this P2- in solution, which is our original starting compound. So in this example, we are starting with a pure solution of the phthalate. Now, a little bit of it will undergo equilibrium to get some of this naturally, but we really want to force that reaction to happen by adding the HCl. Of course, we know the HCl is a strong acid, which will also completely dissociate. And now it's the P2 minus, the polyputic weak base, and the H plus from the strong acid that are going to react together in our reaction of interest. Now, the next step after we've identified this being the reaction of interest is to set up an ice chart so initial change in endpoint, 
And then also to solve this with the henderson hasselbeck equation, where we're using these two compounds and the pKa that they sandwich. Now, we figured out where our pKa value and pH of 6 is, and that the reaction occurring is P2 minus plus H plus completely react to form some HP minus. The next step is to set up an ice chart. From that, we're going to take the information from the question that we have one gram of disodium phthalate to figure out how many moles of phthalate we have. We're going to use the one gram of sodium diphthalate, or disodium phthalate, excuse me, divided by its molecular weight to obtain moles of 0 0.00476 moles. Now the ice chart, we can also call it the rice chart, reaction, initial change, and end, will be filled in. We know that we're starting with this quantity of the P2 minus, and so I'm just going to start using my stylus here, that we have 0 0.00476 moles. We don't know the amount of X. For X, we're going to go ahead and we're going to assume that we don't know the number because the question is how many milliliters of 1.2 molar HCl. So that's actually our variable, right? Is so we need to find moles of HCl required for this reaction, which is going to be from our moles of H+. Also, we don't have a significant amount of HP- present at the beginning of the reaction. And so initially, we're going to say that's zero. That's because we're using a disodium phthalate compound to create this solution, and we have a pretty small amount of the HP- that naturally is generated. The change due to the reaction, we're going to lose X of both the P2 minus and the H plus, and we're going to gain X of the product of HP minus. Therefore, ultimately, our P2 minus is going to be 0 0.00476 minus X. Our H plus is going to be equal to zero from this reaction anyway. A little bit from water doesn't matter. And then we're going to have an amount of X of the HP minus present. Once that ice chart is done, we can solve this using the henderson hasselbach equation. That is going to be our pH equals pK2 plus the log of P2 minus over HP minus. Our desired pH is six. The pKa, the second pKa is 5.408. We're doing log and we start to then put in this information where the P2 minus at the end is 0 0.00476 minus X and the HP minus at the end is X. Transferring that information, so I just move the ice chart up here and the henderson hasselbach equation here. I need a little bit of space to show you how to solve this setup where we're solving for X. First thing is to subtract the 5.48 away from both sides. So it disappears on the right side. We get 0.592 on the left. The next thing that we're going to do is to raise everything 10 to the power of. We're trying to undo this log. And so to undo the log, we do to 10 to the power of. That makes the log disappear. And so we get 10 to the power of 0.592 on the left-hand side. really trying to be able to advance this without whirling my mouse around. All right, next up is to multiply x by both sides, and I simplified the, the 10 to the power of, and that comes out to be 3.908. We're going to then add x to both sides so that we get it away from the right-hand side. So that's gone, and we've got the extra x here. Now we're 4.908. And then solving for x, we're just going to divide by the point the 0 0.00476 divided by 4.908, and we end up with x equals 9.7 times 10 to the minus 4 molar, and that is our concentration of H+. Plus. Or sorry, that is our moles of H+. Plus. Not molar, not concentration, but just straight up moles. It's a really common mistake to make, and I'm glad that I made that mistake just then because moles and molar are so easy to confuse, but we are working with moles here. Once you have the moles, then we use the concentration of the acid, which is specified in the question, 1.2 moles of H plus per liter of that HCl solution, and the unit conversion between milliliters and liters, which lets us come to the final answer of 0.808 mils of HCl. 
And so that is how many mils of HCl we need to add if the HCl is 1.2 molar. We had one gram of Na2P and we wanted that pH of six. So we've answered that question. Now, one more question here would be, okay, if we have the same setup, we have the same diprotic acid of phthalic acid, but now instead of getting to a pH of six, we wanna to go to a pH of two. What are we gonna do? Well, it's the same overall steps. The first is to identify where the desired pH falls within the range of the pKa values. Now that we want a pH of 2.5, it is not only less than the 5.408, but it's also less than pK1 of 2.95. And so our 2.5 is all the way to the left-hand side of this ladder diagram. Okay. The next thing that's gonna occur, because we need to move from disodium phthalate, which is the actual compound that we had in lab, we need to move from phthalate over to hydrogen phthalate and then farther over to phthalic acid. So when we get to this idea of what reaction occurs, there's actually two reactions that occur. The first reaction is going to go to completion and that's the generation of the HP minus. And then we're going to get a partial reaction of HP minus to H2P. It's not an equilibrium, but it's gonna be partial because we don't wanna convert all of the HP minus. We still probably need some of it left to create this buffer that we're aiming for. We will set up an ice chart, same mass of the same compound, just to refresh your memory. That's how we get the 0 0.00476 as our starting moles of Na2P. And we are heading towards the henderson hasselbalch equation, where this is the pKa value, that's the acid on the bottom of the log term, and this is the base, conjugate base to that acid that will be on the top of the log term. Now, with respect to these two reactions, we have the first step where we want all 0.00476 moles of P2 minus to be completely converted to HP minus. So we know it's going to take 0.00476 or the exact same number of moles of HCl to get there. So this is a two step process and that's step one. Step two is to partially convert HP minus to H2P. And we don't know how many moles of HCl that will be. That is now our X. In the ice chart, we're going to then have our initial change and end, and we're working towards having this set up in the same way. Now it's going to look familiar to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and start using black here. We have created 0 0.00476 moles of HP minus when we got this completely done. We're going to be adding X moles of H plus. We don't have any H2P to start with. Losing X from the reactant side and gaining X on the product side, then we are again setting it up by finding out that at the end, we've got X of, <laughs> that's a really awesome X right there. We have X of the acid being formed with 0 0.00476 minus X of the base that is remaining. Our henderson hasselbalch equation, here it is, pK1, we've got our H2P on the bottom, as I promised you, and the conjugate base on the top. Plugging the information in, our new desired pH, the pK1 value, and from the ice chart, oh, my cat just jumped on, we have these two numbers here corresponding to HP minus and H2P. This is going to lead us through the same type of math as I showed you on the prior slide to a conclusion that we need 0 0.00351 moles of HCl. So this is moving it and it's reacting more than half to get us over into H2P being our dominant species, but it's not a complete reaction. And I did say that's two steps. So we're taking this quantity here plus the X moles there in the second step. And that means of course that you're adding those two moles together. Once you have those two moles added together, it's moles per liter for the molarity of HCl and the milliliter to liter conversion. And we find that our answer is 6.89 milliliters of HCl. I hope that this lesson helped you to visualize a little bit how you can move back and forth within the ladder diagram of a polyprotic acid-based series 
in order to create a buffer or to plan how to create a buffer of a desired pH. Thank you.